So lately, this information about Sean Puffy Combs or P. Diddy, Puff Diddy, whatever you want to call him, he has been in the news, he has been in the headlines for all the wrong reasons. So for those of you who don't know, I'm sure there are loads of other YouTube videos or videos online that you could watch where they explain what he was doing. But basically, this man was involved in serious sex crimes, things like human trafficking, sex trafficking, and so forth. So he's a major artist as well as a music producer. All the way from the 90s up until now, he's been linked to some people's deaths as well. But as of late, people say that he would throw huge Hollywood parties, often called white parties or freak-offs. That was the term that was used, where lots of uh, sex slaves were used and uh, a few people were also recorded by secret cameras. His guest list involved a bunch of celebrities, politicians, and so forth. So it's very similar to the Jeffrey Epstein situation where this guy had a secret island where he had a bunch of underage girls who would do sexual favors for the rich and powerful, and he would blackmail them. And then Jeffrey Epstein went to prison, and then it was said that he hanged himself, he killed himself. Basically, you get the picture. So now PDD is going through his trial and so forth. And some people say he might be going away forever for life. And he has now been put under suicide watch. Well, this video is not really about what's going on in the news, but it's for you to understand what's really, really going on. Let's start with the term hazing. All right. So hazing can also be called initiation, beasting, bastardization, ragging, deposition, and so forth. This term refers to any activity expected of someone in joining or participating in a group that humiliates or degrades that person, sometimes even abuses and endangers them. So if someone is joining a gang, we know even gangs do this as well, like your street gangs. Before you join a gang, maybe the whole gang would actually have to fight you and beat you up and you'd have to be in a submissive stance. So then hazing and then we also get different types of social groups, including sports teams, schools, cliques, universities, law enforcement, uh, as well as prisons, fraternities and sororities. Now, these ones, you usually find them in American universities and colleges and so forth. Sometimes you even get it in uh, workplaces. So... The initiation rights can range from relatively benign pranks to protracted patterns or behavior. You know, some of the things could even be criminal or even illegal at times. So basically, hazing is mostly prohibited in many places and uh, other institutions have actually outlawed it as well because it can actually be dangerous. And another interesting part of this hazing is some of the equipment and the things that they use as well. So for example, the hazy or the person who's being humiliated, all right, can be hosed with, uh, you know, water or anything, sprinklers, or even uh, a cold water, you know, from a bucket could be poured over them, or this bucket could be filled with dirt and, you know, these kind of things, rotten eggs, rotten foods, unfortunately, sometimes even urine. Now, get this, sometimes olive or even baby oil may be used to show off the best skin, or even for wrestling, or just for general slipperiness. You know, you can't make this stuff up. Even padding. So basically, someone would take something like, you know, basically a pad, a piece of wood, um, a bat, you know, like the one that you'd play cricket with, or maybe baseball, and basically hit the other person on the behind. And even some other trivial humiliating activities like maybe cleaning the toilets or somebody's shoes with a toothbrush and so forth. That's all part of hazing. In order for you to join a certain uh, organization or group or something like that, you have to go through some kind of ritual. Right? Now, let's skip and go to something a bit unrelated. We're going to look at mentor, the word mentor, you know, mentoring. So as most people know, a mentor is someone who acts as a teacher or a master or sometimes even as a parent, you know, who gives you advice or as a counselor, you know, someone who will help you to basically, you know, um, achieve whatever you're trying to achieve. All right. So now the word mentor itself comes from an old, I believe it was a Greek poem about a man called Odysseus. So basically Odysseus was a soldier, a Greek soldier who was about to go to Troy. And now he had a son, his son by the name of Telemachus. 
So he needed someone to basically look after his son, you know, take care of him, teach him how to become a man and so forth. So therefore, Odysseus uh, found an old man who was, you know, wise in the ways of life and so forth. And this guy was the one who was going to become, you know, this uh, his son's mentor. So basically teach his son how to become a man in case he was to die at war. So this whole concept of mentoring of basically an, an older person, an older man, especially in the ancient times, you know, uh, like mentoring a young man, was not very foreign or anything like that. In fact, if you look in uh, ancient Rome and so forth, relationships between like a young man and, a, and an older man as well was not very uncommon, you know. So Rome was a deeply militarized state, as we all know, and it was a desirable trait to be masculine there. So, you know, there was nothing to hide for those guys. So as a result, the men over there were free to basically engage in homosexual relationships. It basically depended on your status, you know. So basically, if someone was a slave, sometimes even a gladiator, maybe a prostitute and so forth, then it was kind of accepted in a way, you know. As a result of this, men were free to engage in these relationships so long as the active partner had the penetrative power and the submissive partner was considered to be lower in society. So for example, a free Roman man would at that time never be a subject of such kind of discrimination, you know. In fact, if he engaged in sexual activity with a male slave or former prostitute, even an actor, it was quite accepted, you know. So young men, specifically between the ages of 12 and 20, were seen as perfectly acceptable sexual partners for a Roman man. To an extent, there was some kind of cultural expectation for all the Romans to seek these kinds of relationships. So these things go way, way, way back. It's not just something that we see today. So what I'm saying is this whole thing about PDD and his parties and the sex games that were going on, this shouldn't come as any kind of surprise to anyone. People have been doing this. There's nothing new under the sun. That's point number one. And point number two is... Everything I believe in this case is ritual based, you know, to get into certain positions, especially in Hollywood. I think most people know that by now. If you don't know, just type on to the Internet, say Hollywood and Satan. And I'm sure you'll get so many answers on Google or YouTube or whatever. You know, I'm not even going to go down that route. But yes, I believe it's all ritual based. Now you ask yourself why all the you know, graping of people and so forth. I believe people's sexual energy is exactly that energy. So basically, long story short, if you went to the devil and you made a deal and you wanted to get maybe fame and the power and maybe to some degree talent to do something, you'd need some good fortune, right? You'd need some uh, talent. You'd need some energy sent your way. You'd need some form of power. So basically, when people degrade themselves or degrade others, this is a form of worship to Satan or the demon that is going to give you that power. So that's point number two. Or I think sometimes, you know, when you defile what's clean and what's holy, basically like a human body, the human body is the temple of God. So once you defile it in sexual acts and you eat things like feces, drink urine and so forth, or you rape other people, you are not only defiling that person, but you are defiling yourself as well. So basically making yourself a point of contact for these dark demonic entities. This brings me to another point as well. There was something about five years or six years ago called the Dubai Potter Potty. So basically, uh, there was a rumor going around that Instagram models, I'm talking about models who are known and unknown from all over the world, they would fly all the way into Dubai only to have sexual affairs with some of the men over here. But instead of it going as what people would normally associate uh, such an affair with, these men would defecate on these women. So basically, they put feces in their faces, pee on them, and the women would have to eat uh, these feces as well and drink the urine and so forth. I know it sounds very grotesque, very gross, and um, I'm sorry for that. But if you really wanted to go and find that out, there's a video that was floating online 
I think this was a lady who was basically telling uh, one of her prospective uh, buyers, you know, like one of the guys that was basically looking for this kind of uh, thing to be done. So she made a video um, explaining and describing what she would be doing and for how much. And so somewhere, somehow, this video kind of got leaked, you know. So for a long time, many people thought, why would these women eat this stuff? And in fact, why would these rich Arab men go so far as to do such a thing just to get off? And it puzzled me as well, up until I realized that even that as well is ritual-based. Not every Arab man in uh, the Middle East is rich of things like oil and so forth, uh, or is a businessman. Uh, some of them are involved in these dark rituals as well, where you sell your soul to the devil for money. So now, not every sacrifice is going to involve, you know, blood and so forth, but sometimes it may be destiny swapping, you know, taking the glory or the life essence of someone, you know, killing them even before they die, if you know what I mean. So the way it would happen is, once someone would defecate on such a girl and she ate your feces, drank his urine and so forth, and maybe even engaged in sexual intercourse after that, all of those things are a form of energy. So by you taking his waste, uh, eating his feces, drinking his urine and so forth, you are kind of inviting a spirit of waste and rejection upon you and whatever else that guy is involved in. And your good luck, your good fortune, your essence, your God essence is being swapped. And therefore, this guy is using your life force and energy to succeed in business. And some years down the line, I'm sure those women will regret or have regretted doing what they did. I'm sure things just went down the drain from there on. Maybe businesses are not working out anymore. Maybe they couldn't land a job or keep a relationship. These things do happen. If you just speak to people out there, you'll hear all sorts of crazy stories. So in conclusion, I believe the whole PDD thing was a ritual base and people who went to his parties knowingly, I'm talking about those celebrities, went there to basically strike deals with the devil or some kind of entity for fame and fortune. And those poor victims were killed uh, spiritually and uh, maybe some even physically. And this also is the reason why kids are involved in such things because the energy that you get from a child is uh, pure and in occultic circles, in dark circles, the energy of a child is pure and very, very strong. And it's sort of like a potent drug, you know, that would work. So that's very unfortunate. I know as dark as it sounds, but these things do exist and it is out there. Now you'd ask yourself, why is then PDD getting arrested and everything else? It could be that, you know, he hasn't held up his end of the bargain. It could be that his time is up. Not everyone has to die immediately once their time is up. It could be that, you know, he had signed or made some kind of pact or covenant with a dark entity to say that, you know what, I'm going to be on top for about 30 years and then I'll die, then I'll become your slave or something like that, you know. If you look, I mean, we had guys like like Jeffrey Epstein, we had Hugh Hefner. You will always have a PDD type of figure, especially in showbiz. Sometimes they are just situated in different places. You find some in politics, some in showbiz, some in sports, but if you look for them, you'll find them.